For those of you who are familiar with how I tend to describe some of my more advanced tutorials on this channel, you will know that I refer to a lot of these concepts as an illusion, or the creation of an illusion, making it seem like something's happening when it's actually not. Now, if you weren't already aware, there are no quote-unquote blood props in the game, but if we take a piece and we use it in a way that it wasn't initially intended to be used, we can create the illusion of very realistic blood. I suppose I should make it abundantly clear that if your goal is to have whatever you're creating with this realistic blood be featured, um, that's not gonna happen because Epic doesn't like blood. But if your goal is just to learn how to make realistic blood for the sake of knowing how to do it and adding that skill to your arsenal, then hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to do exactly that. Just a little background for you guys on this whole realistic blood journey thing. My first ever feature was initially denied because of blood that I put on this character right here. So in case any of you are wondering whether or not I know what I'm talking about, just know that I had a map denied because the blood in it was too realistic. Um... So there's that. Hey everyone, this is Syntax, and today we're gonna be taking a pretty in-depth look at how to make realistic blood inside of Fortnite Creative, using a prop that was 100% not intended to be used this way. We're gonna be looking at a whole slew of different blood patterns, ranging from puddles to streaks and drips, and I'm gonna be showing you guys all of the techniques you would theoretically need to execute these bloody, creepy visions that you have in the back of your mind for whatever reason. Everything you've already seen and everything you are going to see with regards to blood was made using the red carrot from the snowman prop gallery. I'm going to show you guys how to resize this thing and rotate it to execute the patterns that I just mentioned and to ultimately make the most realistic looking blood possible. Now, when you're making your realistic blood, you don't necessarily just have to use the red carrot. There are a bunch of really good props inside the indoor residential prop gallery, like the apple or the jars of jelly, or even this piece of meat way down here. There's also a red egg inside the egg gallery that is equally as effective, but I choose to use the red carrot because it's the most reflective and it is the best shape for trying to do what I want to do. Anyway, with all that being said, let's take a look at the first example that I want to talk about. Possibly one of the hardest actual techniques to execute because it's so difficult to make it actually look good. That is pools slash puddles of blood. Remember, the goal here is to make this as realistic as we possibly can. So if you're first starting out, I would encourage actually using the bottoms of jelly jars or even the apples because that's just an easier shape to work with. But once you get good enough, there are a ton of ways you can manipulate the carrot piece to actually make it look really good. You'll notice that when you initially pull the red carrot out of the snowman prop gallery that it's a pretty small piece which makes it really good for detailing but this particular puddle that I had in mind I wanted to be relatively large so I actually grew the carrot to max size and rotated it so that I could use the top for the base of my puddle. From here I wanted to expand the size of the puddle but I didn't want to just keep using the top of the carrot because that would look awkward so I ended up turning it on its side and I initially shrunk the width to get it really thin but then I ended up shrinking the depth and the height a little more. I spent a long time turning it and orienting it so it was parallel with the ground and eventually Eventually, I ended up placing it and rounding the top of my initial carrot placement. I then took that piece that I just placed, rotated it 180 degrees, and after growing the width just slightly, I staggered it again with the intention of growing the size of this puddle. Now, the great thing about puddles is once you get them started, they are relatively easy to expand upon because we're just going to be using all of the same pieces we already have placed out here. For example, you can see I use the top of the carrot again for here. I use a bunch of meticulously rotated pieces to just continue expanding upon it, and as long as it doesn't look too chunky and it's relatively smooth, then you have yourself a perfect puddle. Remember, if it's your first time using this thing, it's going to be relatively difficult to work with, not only because of its awkward shape, but the more you resize the depth and the width of this thing, the more awkward the hitbox gets. You can see there are certain parts in this process where I am aiming at a completely different section of the area, and it's highlighting the piece that is nowhere near my phone reticle. But anyway, once you get good at making puddles, you can actually use the same technique to make things like bloodied footprints, or you could put blood at the bottom of things like buckets, or cups, or sinks, anything Anything that involves any form of puddle, you'll be able to use this exact same technique to execute a perfect look. With regards to puddles, that is pretty much everything that I have to say. So we're going to move on to the next section of the video. The next technique that I want to talk about is making streaks of blood. Now, while the carrot is a really awkward shape to try to make a streak out of, if you take the height and shrink it all the way down, you end up getting rid of a lot of the curvature. And by taking that and placing it parallel to whatever surface you want it to be on, you end up with what are really cool looking blood streaks. The most important aspect of executing this 
technique properly is making sure that whatever surface you want to place the carrot on, that the majority of the carrot is phased into that surface. Since we want that straighter, thinner part of the carrot, the majority of it has to be phased into the surface to really get that straight streak look. If you're looking to make a shorter blood streak, then you probably only need one or two carrots, but the longer that your streak gets, the more carrots you're going to want to use, because remember, after we shrink that height down, the straight side is really only so long. You can actually see on a lot of these claw marks, there's like four or five carrots placed next to each other and on the same plane going the same direction to create that streak look. And guys, before I move on, I want to give a quick shout out to Slurp for letting me use his Golden Freddy model to demonstrate some of these techniques on making realistic blood. In case you weren't already aware, no, I did not build that thing. But if you want to know more about the guy that did, you can follow him on Twitter at Slurp. His page is full of equally impressive, if not more impressive builds, and he's just an extremely talented creator. So do me a favor and give him a follow. Anyway, back to making streaks of blood. I wanted to have a reason for that pool of blood being below Golden Freddy's left hand. So I decided to put a few streaks in his hand. I shrunk the piece all the way down and then I stretched the depth so it was a little bit longer and I placed a few pieces on his hand here and there, had them run off the side and lo and behold, I had streaks of blood on his hand. From the angles that I got, it may not look like the majority of the carrots are actually phased into his hand, but trust me, because those lines are so straight, you can almost guarantee that that's exactly what's happening. Later in the build, I also went ahead and put some streaks on his chest and you can in fact see that the majority of the carrot is phased into his his chest so we get that nice straight piece showing out front. So yeah, that's how you make blood streaks. Just remember to get rid of the curvature on that carrot. You have to shrink the height all the way down. And if you want a thinner streak, you also have to shrink the width. But once you've got that down, you can pretty much put streaks on any surface you want and going any direction you please. The last technique I want to talk about is actually my personal favorite because not only is it the most compatible with the shape of the piece we're working with, but it really ties together the whole puddles and streaks of blood unbelievably well. It's the best looking and that is dripping blood. Everything that I have shown you guys in this video today has had some form of dripping blood incorporated into the build. Whether we're looking at the artistic build that I did a few weeks ago, the jack-in-the-box artistic build, if we're looking at Golden Freddy, there's dripping blood everywhere, and even on the wall in the back rooms, I pretty much use it in every build that involves blood. The default shape of the carrot is actually a cheat code for this building technique because if you take it and flip it upside down to the point where the thicker end end is towards the bottom and it thins out toward the top, it already looks like a drop of blood. It looks like a teardrop and we can use that to really effectively create the illusion of dripping blood. In case you guys have forgotten, the goal is to make this look as realistic as possible. So if there's one thing that you take away from making realistic blood, it's that the blood should obey gravity. Blood drips downward. It's not going to be dripping sideways. It's not going to drip upward. So anytime you are making dripping blood, do your best to make it follow a path that obeys gravity. If you look toward the bottom of the mother's mask, there actually is a drop of blood. And in the case of all the claw marks, I actually put several drops of blood at the beginning, ends, and middles of the claw marks to indicate that gravity still has an effect on these streaks of blood by creating little drips everywhere. If you look at the original source of blood on Split's head, you can see how it drips down in multiple locations, again, obeying gravity, eventually making its way to the center of his chest. And it's the same with Golden Freddy. Even with the streaks on his hand, it drips off of the side of his hand onto the floor and of course in several other spots as well. The first idea I had for Golden Freddy was making it look like he was bleeding from one of his eyes. So I took the carrot, I shrunk it all the way down, and then I sort of contorted it into this weird bulge shape and placed it halfway into his eye socket to make it look like that's where it started. Similar to how I approached building most of the streaks, I wanted to make sure that the majority of each carrot that I was placing on his face was phased into it because I only wanted to use the sides of the carrot that best represented the dripping of blood. And once I had that initial piece, piece placed down, it was pretty much smooth sailing from there. Every piece that I ended up placing was unique in its own way, whether it was rotated in a different orientation, or it was a slightly different size, or I had a different side of the carrot visible. All of the pieces were unique, and eventually, after taking it from his eye socket and running it all the way down his cheek, I had a really cool looking bloodstream dripping from his eye. I also went so far as to take a couple of extra carrots and line them up with where it was dripping down his cheek and place a small puddle on his knee. So not only was it dripping all the way down his face, but it was also landing and piling 
up on his knee below the area of where it was dripping. Oh, and in case any of you are wondering how I'm building in first person, I just grabbed a barrier from the devices gallery, I made it invisible, gave it a 5x5x5 five by five by five area, and then placed it directly below where I wanted to be working. For me, it just makes it a lot easier to get closer to the pieces I'm placing down, and it really just makes it easier overall. So if you want to build in first person, just grab a barrier and place it where you want to work. The rest of the blood dripping from Golden Freddy's face was made in the exact same way. By using pieces of different sizes and uniquely oriented rotations, I started with the other eye having the blood coming over his mouth slash nose area and dripping downward in a very similar fashion. For the blood dripping from Freddy's mouth, I used a larger carrot as my base piece, and from there I took a bunch of smaller ones and had it run along the bottom of his jaw. Eventually, I dripped it over his bow tie and then his chest slash stomach area, again, just using pieces of different sizes and shapes, and eventually I had a really cool looking blood spilling pattern. I finished this build off by putting another small pool of blood below where it was dripping from his mouth, and the final result was a really bloodied version of Golden Freddy. Again, thank you Slurp for letting me use your model to demonstrate all of these techniques, and I really hope you guys actually enjoyed the final product. And ladies and gentlemen, that is pretty much everything that I have to say with regards to making realistic blood, but before I go, I have a couple of really good examples that I want to show you in the form of screenshots that I got from one of my good friends over at Vicenna Studios. These are insane examples, and they showcase how you can actually use different pieces aside from just the red carrot. When I asked this person if they had any screenshots they could share with me for a YouTube video regarding realistic blood, Trey JTH, or Trey J. Thompson, if you will, was kind enough to send over examples of works of art where he beautifully used realistic blood. I'm pretty sure in each of these examples, the red carrot wasn't actually used at all, so you can see just how well you can make realistic blood with other pieces. It doesn't have to be the red carrot. In all of these examples, we can see where the blood starts. It's obviously dripping down these women's faces, and we can even see in some examples that it piles up below from where it started dripping. Trey, thank you so much for the screenshots. These are all superb examples of realistic blood. And to everyone who has not yet tried to make realistic blood, but wants to, hopefully after seeing all of these examples, you are now inspired to do so. And with that, I think I've said everything I want to say. Remember, making realistic blood isn't necessarily the best way to try and get featured, but if you were just looking to add another skill to your arsenal of things you're capable of, hopefully after watching this video, you are able to do just that. But anyway, guys, that is everything I have for you today. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, this has been Syntax. Later.